Gen Next students, uh, which the founders introduced as a hybrid tutoring platform because it brings together private tutoring with tech-enabled learning. Ali Asghar Kazi is the founder of the company and he's joining us on Rising Stars. Great to have you with us, Ali. Thank you very now, much. There was a little bit of a shift that you did in your business, which is very interesting because you started off in 2013. You realize that uh, just having a pure online play is uh, not good enough. The business didn't come in. So by 2016, you changed tag. Tell us about that. What really prompted it now that you have this hybrid platform? Right. So as you rightly said, we started in 2013. And that time, it was a pure content delivery platform. Mm -hmm. Because the idea was that, you know, if you could leverage technology in the Indian context and you could have best of the content. So someone who's sitting in a remote area, let's say in uh, Bihar, can have access to the best of the content by the teachers, created by the teachers in, let's say, Mumbai. But when we started, we realized that, you know, it was not picking up because there were two challenges to that. So one was definitely an infrastructural challenge mm -hmm. and which is, you know, you know that the broadband penetration in the country is not that great. You right. know, it is, although the mobile broadband and mobile internet is picking up, but it is still at a very, very, very low level. But right? when the urban, the metros are really delivering the business for you? Yes. So metros are just a small part of the overall market, right? But were they all taken? Because that part of it uh, with the existing players perhaps were taken already right that kind of space right what we can say is that they already have a lot of resources at their disposal sure so they are spoiled for choice you can say it right. that way right but it is these tier two tier three cities the smaller towns which are really you know uh, growing fast which are coping up especially these smart cities yes that is where the real real uh, you know gap exists sure. and that is the gap that we are looking to tackle right so how does it actually work this business model that you have because obviously you're catering to students mm -hmm. k to 12 right so right. it's called the k12 uh, kindergarten Garden to 12th. Uh, so we have our different uh, syllabi and under different boards as well. So all of that is collated for the different geographies that uh, you uh, work in already? Right. So what we've started with is the national boards. Mm -hmm. So you know there are national boards like CBSE and ICSE. So the syllabi are prescribed by these boards and the schools which are affiliated to these boards, they largely follow the same syllabus. Right. So we've created that for the national level and then we've moved to the state levels as well. So we have created the content for Rajasthan board for the Uttar Pradesh board which mm -hmm. is in the Hindi media and by the way we are the first player to do that in the uh, Hindi medium right and that's the reason that uh, we have now just launched our services in Lucknow which was just yesterday so that we could cater to that crowd as well right and for us now content is just not the only differentiator we feel that content is highly commoditized and mm -hmm. it's a very small part of our overall deliverable right but education is very very personalized and every child is different so every child needs to have a different approach towards learning, different approach towards education. So you're working through tutors right now mm -hmm. who uh, you get on board uh, when they actually get on the app. It's a little bit like Uber because uh, they're obviously signing up uh, with you, but not necessarily exclusive with you. They're not on your payroll. So right. how does it actually work the system that you have with tutors who work in the various geographies that you're present uh, now in Lucknow as well, like you said? Right. So uh, like you rightly said, the tutors are not on our payroll. The idea is that these, uh, that the platform it brings together anyone who's passionate about teaching, who's mm -hmm. passionate about impacting lives through education, they can become tutor on our platform. Right. And in fact, we term them as tutorpreneurs, right? That means a tutor has the power to become an entrepreneur by teaching. Mm -hmm. They can make a very, very respectable living for them. Right. And this could be either housewives, this could be, you know, uh, working professionals, students, maybe people with uh, special abilities or needs. Anyone can become a tutor on our platform. So it's based so, on their qualifications that uh, they would get the kind of fees that they would? No. So there are uh, multiple parameters that work here. When a tutor signs up with us, we definitely collect their uh, information. We conduct the background checks. Plus, these tutors have to go through certain assessments. So there are proficiency test there's a language proficiency test there are subject proficiency tests these help us grade the tutors into various class labs as well right. which we have created internally mm -hmm. then they are also uh, subjected to the orientation to right. explain them how the process works sure. and we have created a proprietary tutor rating algorithm at our back end using technology and that's where the power of technology comes in uh, in this hybrid model. So there is a certain rating that uh, will come up for yes, every tutor. Yes, and it's a, it's a real time rating. Right. So this rating is based on the credentials of the tutor, mm -hmm. based on definitely the education qualifications and the experience and all those things. 
but it is also i mean in addition to that it is also largely based on their performance their adherence of course the feedback that we are getting from Absolutely. the parents from the students so capital is something that you would still require right right by way of expansion your marketing costs are only going to rise because like we said it's a very competitive space you've got some very established names who are also drawing in the kind of funding that uh, many of the others are in the edtech space so whether you look at an e-shiksha or you look at an mbibe or a nactus india or a qmath all of these within the edtech space are drawing a lot of traction how difficult has it been to convince uh, people to come on board with funding so see for us funding has been uh has come in and it has been very selective from whom we get funding so as i uh, mentioned that you know we had been bootstrapped for quite some time yes. and we really wanted to partner when you started out we were bootstrapping yeah, yeah we so were you bootstrapping. put in 50 lakhs at that time i understand yeah that was the seed capital that we put in and then we had been very selective in terms of getting the right kind of people on board because it's just not about the money it is about people who have got that sort of mindset so sure. we have got our mentors on board as well who have helped us with this entire transition and with this entire strategy you would understand that education is not a very short term play it's a very very long term play and you have to ensure that you have that longevity yes. so obviously uh, money is an important part we have raised the uh, you know funding in this process as well we raised our first round of external funding uh, last year early last year which was around 1.4 crore rupees and recently we have closed a pre series a round of 3.75 crore rupees mm -hmm. and now the plan is to raise around 3 million dollars moving ahead which will help us to expand very quickly to the the uh, you know the remaining parts of the country by way of the technology piece or just uh, being able to uh uh, really expand your operations as such uh, to get more tutors on board, etc. Where will the focus be when you're looking at that kind of money coming in? What are going to be your largest spends? Is it going to be marketing as well? Technology definitely yes. Technology is going to be the largest spend, and then you would have marketing, which is the next uh, in line because it's a combination of technology and marketing that you move ahead. And I said that beauty of technology is that it can help you expand very rapidly. without having that sort of capital expenditure which you would require if you did not have technology in place that's true so it's looking uh, promising right now but of course these are very early days and uh, scalability wise the possibilities are uh, inbuilt into the kind of business model that you've created the hybrid uh, business model that you've created reskilling online certification these are also large areas but of course the space that you're in which is primary and secondary education that's something that uh, is growing by leaps and bounds too so right. i'm looking at a report that is saying that it's going to grow quite rapidly by 2021 we are looking at uh, a big upsurge in that kind of business so good luck going ahead we are going to check in with you in the future to see how the business is uh, going along good luck and thank you for thank you very us. much thanks for having me thank you That's Ali and he's uh, running uh, this entire edtech enterprise so uh, we will have a lot many more uh, entrepreneurs on this show called Rising Stars but for the moment from Eva Kamoz and the entire team bye bye